Well, here we are. Give everybody time to get in here. Hey, what's up, John? And give everybody a little time to get in here. Hey, what's up, fun kid? What's up, lady? If I know any any of you guys from as a different name through Twitter or something, please let me know. <laughs> Chucky's looking right at you, Joker. Right at you. Don't smoke. It's bad for you. Just waiting on a few more people here and we'll get this thing going. Actually, give me one second here. Unless she gets set on fire, right? One second, guys. I'm pulling something up here. Huh. Where'd it go? There it is. Got to start the uh, the stream off right with the new animated intro. What did you guys think of the animated intro? Good one, Anthony. Sup? It looks like uh, the animated intro, we're going to do a new one every two or three months that picks up where the last one left off probably going to be like four or five of them about me trying to escape the library and every new intro will have like the next one will have pinhead and chucky then leatherface and ghostface we're going to have all these different slashers until the end and in the last one ash williams from evil dead is going to make an appearance to take his uh, book back thanks fun kid thanks joker hi right, guys so this is the after hours q a so to start things off, I'm going to take questions from you guys, and uh, anything you want to know about the books I've done, the books that are coming, anything about the channel, anything you want to ask me, even if it has nothing to do with the channel, go for it. Well, some of the slashers that are in the video are uh, Dead by Daylight killers, John. Okay, the Final Destination series. Uh, probably as soon as I finish all the original Freddy and Jason stuff. I think I'll sneak in a Final Destination book before I start the uh, novelizations of the movies, of the Freddy, Jason, and Halloween movies. So uh, as soon as I finish off the Eric Morse books, the Jason X books I'm doing right now, the last one, <clears throat> and the Freddy books that are original stories. 
I'll do a final destination, and then I'll start on the uh, movie novelizations of Friday, Halloween, and Elm Street. The end of the PG era, they're going to finally end the PG era, so no more leprechaun courts taking place underneath the wrestling ring, none of that. I think the Attitude Era was made just so they could beat WCW. And as soon as he bought WCW, he had no reason to do the Attitude stuff anymore. So he uh, went to the whole PG thing. He's like, ah, you have nowhere else to watch wrestling. But now that he does, now that he's got the AWE or whatever, AEW, uh, and it's kind of real competition, that's why he's turning back the Attitude back up like that. Oh, no, I know it's not after like after hours for everybody. I'm saying the library's closed, so it's after hours for the library. It's after business hours. Yeah, I saw Bischoff is back in control. That's pretty neat. I grew up during the Attitude Era as a teenager, and I was a big WCW fan, big WCW fanboy. Yeah, the thing is, I want to talk about the reboot, Chucky, because I went to see that in theaters. And yeah, it's not Chucky. It's not a Chucky movie, in my opinion. The thing, the sad part of this movie is the script and the actors were really good. It was a really good killer doll AI gone bad story. But what ruined it is naming it Child's Play and making the doll look like Chucky. If they had made the doll look like anything else and given it any other name and named the movie something besides Child's Play, this would have been an amazing movie that everybody loved. What killed this movie was calling it Child's Play just like they did with Evil Dead, because the remake Evil Dead was not as good as the old Evil Deads, and it, but it was a good movie. It was an awesome horror movie. It just was not an Evil Dead movie. And also, like the Godzilla 1998, um, it was an awesome giant monster movie, but it wasn't an awesome Godzilla movie. And, and yeah, John, I love the old Chuckies, and I love the remake. I really enjoyed the remake. What I'm saying is it would get better. More people would love the movie, if it wasn't called Child's Play and the doll's name wasn't Chucky and it looked different. Because it is a really good horror movie, a really good AI gone bad killer doll movie. It really is. Uh, I believe the owl said three licks to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop. Yes, I was a wrestler for 10 years on the independent circuit. I was never famous or anything. Some people told me the new Chucky... They think it looks like the president, but I don't. I don't get into the political stuff, so I don't, I'm not. I can't really make a comment on that. I'm against politics, actually, all politics. Now I've never read the Microscope series. I want to make sure I haven't missed anything here. <clears throat> Would you ever do more obscure horror slasher novels? Yes, I will. I'm going to be doing some Fear Street whenever I get through the uh, uh, slasher icons, and I will look into that novel you're talking about. I'm making a list. The Cult by Sean Jeffrey. I will add that to my list. I will do that. Necroscope. No. And no, I'm not in a cult. No. I'm in a Dwight cult on... Uh, Dead by Daylight, we're making an army called the Boomstick Bros. Okay. I'll look at the microscope and I'll look up The Cult by Sean Jeffrey. Guys, you should check out this uh, Joker Harley uh, 2 makeup channel. The guy's really cool. Him and JV211, their channels, they're really great guys and I really like their content. I consider them friends. There are a couple ghost face novels <clears throat> written by RJ Torbert, but the reason I can't do those books is because they're still being published, still being sold in stores. And this channel is not about taking money out of the pockets of publishers and authors. This channel is about getting you guys these out of print rare books that the only money that I'm taking away from people is the price gougers selling their used copies for like a hundred bucks. Have a good night, Warren. Thank you for dropping by. Glad to see you. 
Yeah, comics would be hard. I mean, I guess I could like set up a screen sh uh, slideshow of the comics, the pages of the comic as I narrate them. Ah, okay. I'm going to do some uh, giveaways tonight, some trivia for some ebooks where you can win um, a Child's Play 2 or Child's Play 3 movie novelization in the book in a PDF file that I'll email to you if you win. And I'm also going to have a drawing at the end of the stream where um, whoever wins gets to do the voice of a character in an upcoming audiobook upload. Not the whole book, just one upload, like a two to three chapter hour-long upload. You'll get to do the voice of one of the characters in those chapters. Well, yeah, wrestling, of course, of course, wrestling is fake. I mean, it's choreographed. It's entertainment. I did. I was a wrestler for 10 years and it might be fake, but I guarantee I'm telling you right now, it does hurt. You have to be an athlete to do it. And it is really hard work. You have to be in really good shape. Like a five minute wrestling match is like running five miles. It's, you got to really be in tip top shape to do it. And uh, when I broke my back in wrestling, that was not a fake. Yes, Misty, thank you. I know. Uh, you're the one that made the prediction that it would grow this fast, if you remember. You told me that I'd hit a million. I don't know if that's going to happen, but it, it could. Yeah, I know Seamus' back is effed up, yeah. Have any of y'all seen the video on this channel of me getting my back broke when I was wrestling? I've got it on my uh, older videos if you go through them. Why does fun kids' messages keep getting retracted? Can somebody tell me? Yeah, I did. To be a wrestler, you put your body through hell for sure. <clears throat> I'm only uh, 34 years old, and I feel like I'm 50 whenever I get up in the morning. Yeah, Seed of Chucky was not good. I did like Bride of Chucky just because it was like in the era of movies like Scream and stuff, where movies were parodying themselves. But Cedar Chucky was just ridiculous. But I will tell you this, Curse of Chucky and Cult of Chucky are nothing like Seed of Chucky. They are a return to form. They are really good Chucky movies. They do not make Chucky stupid. They are way better than Seed and way better than Bride, in my opinion. Oh, that's Aaron. Fun kid is my niece, Aaron, guys. Hey, Aaron, how you doing? You changed your name. I didn't know that was you. Hey, everybody, here's the Late Late Horror Show. These guys are awesome. They do some great stuff with horror news and everything. You need to go over, check out their channel, and subscribe to them. Uh, also with Joker Harley 2 and JB211. Great channels. And the Horror Hack. He's a, he's a, he's a new channel, and it looks pretty promising. I've been reading Child's Play 3's novelization, and so far it's pretty interesting. Yes, the books do the books do uh, drift from where the what the movies were a little bit. That's what I enjoy about that's what I enjoy about novelizations is the uh, author can uh, take the stories a little further than the movies were. The Wicker Man, okay. As long as uh, Lady uh, Paracosm, my only rule is if the book is still being published and sold brand new. I can't do an audio book of it, but if it's out of print, I will do it. As long as there's nobody left to make money on the book other than people selling used copies. Oh, okay, check out his Twitch then. Uh, you can put a link to your Twitch if you'd like. Hey, Jennifer, thank you for coming in and being a moderator. Well, can you look on Amazon and see if it's still brand new or if it's just used copies? Uh, yeah, anything that's in the public domain, John, I can do. Anything, I mean, you could go publish those books, I think, and, and sell them if they're in the public domain.
Steve-O, I was talking about it earlier. It's it's a really good killer doll movie. It really is. It's a good AI gone bad. Is it a good Chucky movie? No. In fact, you actually end up feeling sorry for Chucky in the remake. You really do. You sympathize with him for a, for a big part of the movie. Are we having fun now? It is kind of cool that Luke Skywalker is doing the voice, though. I'm also going to read a true scary story from Reddit tonight on the stream. I'm going to do that pretty soon. What do you guys think of the creepy pastas I've done so far? I've done three of them. Do y'all like me doing those every now and then as a little break in between audiobook narrations? Okay. Well, lady, as long as they're selling new ones, it's out of my hands. But thank you. Um, thanks for bringing it to my attention. I would have. I love The Wicker Man. Not the remake with Nicolas Cage, the movie. I didn't like that, but uh, I like the story. No, you would never sympathize with this Chucky, the original Chucky. But in the remake, you got to understand this thing is like a, uh, it's a, it's like a robot that learns from you. And all this little, all this little Chucky in the new movie is trying to do is make his friend happy and be a good best buddy. And so you do sympathize for him because he wouldn't be this way if he hadn't been hacked by his creator. It's hard to explain. Go see it. Thank you, Jennifer. Okay, I'll look into it being, see if it's public domain. All right, um, unless somebody has a question right now, I'm going to go ahead and read the true scary story that I selected from Reddit. This is something that happened to somebody whenever they were a kid. I thought it was a pretty creepy story. It's not too long, and uh, I told them I would narrate it on the channel, so I'm going to read it during the stream. Um while I'm reading it on the stream, I won't be able to see the chat because I'm going to have to open up another window. But uh, so, yeah, I'm going to wait about 30 more seconds before I start. And uh, if you have any questions before I start, go ahead and ask now. Jennifer, people's told me that like they told me that they said that I remind them of like a mix between Nick Cage and Ross from Friends. Uh, no, not the bees. Well, yeah, I always credit the author. I always get permission first. I do, I do short ones. I don't, I don't do really long ones. I think all my creepypastas have been in around 10 minutes a piece. But yeah, the, uh, the main thing I didn't like about the new Chucky is we don't have Brad Dourif, you know? Always love Brad Dourif's Chucky voice. It's like, you can't keep the good guy down. I always love that. All right. I love you too. If there's no uh, questions, I'm going to start the true scary story. Like I said, I won't be able to see the chat. Yes, I loved him in the Halloween remakes and on Deadwood. And if you've never seen Deadwood, I recommend watching it. He's the doctor on that show. And they just did a uh, Deadwood movie on HBO uh, May 31st, I believe. All right, guys, I'm going to switch over. And now I'm going to narrate the true scary story. I won't be able to see the chat, but I will be right back. If you have any questions, you can ask the moderators. Uh, moderators, if anything important comes up while I'm away, please remember it and let me know about it whenever I get done narrating this. We good? Oh, okay. Let me check something real quick here. Okay, here I go. I'm going to start on the, uh, the true scary story. This one is called Creepy Smelly Guy Grabbed Me as a Kid. And it was written by Jenny Bean 2000 on Reddit. And she posted it in the Let's Not Meet subreddit. Hey there. 
I've mostly been a lurker for most of my time on Reddit. I've posted a few times, not in this subreddit, but I have been reading a ton of posts here and decided to share this story about something that happened to me when I was younger. Some details are very vivid, others are fuzzy, but I'll try to make it as accurate as I can remember. When I was growing up, we lived in Baltimore City until I turned 12. This incident happened, I believe, when I was around 7 or 8. I don't remember exactly, but I know it was definitely before I turned 9 because my older brother left for boot camp and then later deployed whenever I was 9. Both my brother and mother were, are, in the military. And he was still at home and not yet in the military when this happened. Also, I am mute. I was born with deformed vocal cords, which isn't super important, but it does affect the story somewhat. Our house was only six blocks from my school, and I walk home by myself on some days. Sometimes my brother would meet me at my school and walk me home, but he played football and baseball and sometimes would be at his school for practice. My mother worked 12-hour shifts as a nurse, so some days she would pick me up, others she wouldn't. Of course, she wasn't too keen on me walking home, but me being a stupid and naive kid had nagged her enough to where she finally let me walk home on those days instead of taking the bus. It was only six blocks, and again, being a kid, it made me feel mature and responsible. I know, stupid me. My mom had always been worried about predators like most parents are, but she worried that me being mute would make me an easier target since I can't scream. I do always carry a whistle around my neck, and the importance of stranger danger had been drilled into me by my mom. She had also had me learning self-defense since I was four, but again, I was only seven or eight at the time, and I hadn't exactly mastered any of those skills. On the day of this event, I was walking home by myself. I was a very lonely kid who didn't have any friends. I'm not announcing that for pity or anything, just to help you understand why I was alone. I usually did a pretty good job of being mindful of my surroundings, but again, I was a kid and my mind would sometimes wander and daydream like any other normal kid. I was about halfway home when it happened. I was passing by a narrow alleyway and out of nowhere, I felt myself grabbed very roughly from behind. I felt my body just freeze up in panic. One thing I remember very vividly was the odor. The guy smelled terrible, just awful B.O. like nasty old gym socks that you left in the bottom of your locker and forgot about them until the end of the school year or something. I could feel his hot, horrible breath against the back of my head and neck. He was breathing heavy, like a dog does when it's hot out. He didn't say a word. I just remember his arms wrapped so tightly around me. Looking back now, I realize he must have been watching me, watching me for a while because he never tried to cover my mouth. He must have known that I was mute. Even though it was just a few seconds, it felt like time slowed down. I couldn't move, like my brain just wouldn't tell my body to move or something. I remember seeing the sidewalk get further away as he pulled me back into the alley. Finally, my body woke the hell up and I started flailing as hard, as hard as I could. I don't know if he was actually strong or if it was just because of my age but his grip felt like it was going to crush me. I kept trying to reach my hand up to grab my whistle and try to get it in my mouth, but my arms were pinned at my sides with his arms around me. I was kicking my legs as hard as I could. I felt so helpless. No matter how hard I tried, I could not break free, not even a little bit. I remember a thought flashing in my head that this was the kind of thing my mom and my teachers had always warned us about. It made me even more scared. I tried kicking my heels back into him, hoping maybe I'd get lucky and nail a shin or something. No such luck. It just made him squeeze me tighter. He was squeezing so tight I could barely breathe. I guess it was the combination of being squeezed like that and the fear of what was happening, but I started feeling dizzy and faint. That was the most terrifying moment because I felt like if everything went black, that I'd never wake up again. My head was starting to droop down, and I could feel myself getting very weak. From out on the street, I heard a loud, Hey, what the fuck? And I managed to raise my eyes up and saw two figures running toward us and yelling. The guy holding me immediately let go. 
I had been up in the air and kind of landed on the concrete in a heat, gasping. I was shaking so hard. My backpack felt like it weighed a thousand pounds. I could hear the footsteps of the two people running towards us and the footsteps of the other guy running away down the other side of the alley. I could feel one of them tear past me. I felt the breeze as he passed and even heard the sound of it in my ear. The other person must not have wanted to leave me there and stopped. I was still in this daze, a little dizzy and in some kind of shock, I guess. I felt their hand touch my shoulder and asked if I was okay. This jolted me out of the daze and I just bolted. I didn't look at them or anything. I just took off out of the alleyway and sprinted to our house. I got inside, locked the door, and just collapsed into a ball in the foyer. All my emotions caught up with me then, and I just sobbed and sobbed. I lay there for what felt like forever. I was still there when my brother came in from practice. I was still very visibly upset, and he immediately wanted to know what was wrong. I explained what happened, though I'm sure it was not nearly as coherent as the way I'm telling you now since I was still extremely shook up. He called the police immediately and then my mom. After that, my brother was a, sorry, I went over a line there. My brother was a decently sized guy and I'm sure he wanted to hunt the smelly guy down, but he sat on the steps with me in his lap until the police came. The police in that area don't exactly have the best response time, but they actually arrived fairly quickly. My mom got there shortly after they did, of course, out of her mind with worry and anger. My brother and mom helped me relay to the police what happened. I communicate through ASL and they translated to the police for me. Since I couldn't give a description, I never actually saw the guy. They said they'd be on the lookout for anyone acting suspicious, but the chances of finding him were extremely slim. However, it turns out the two guys that ran into the alley to help me had called the police as well and were able to give somewhat of a description though apparently the guy had on a knit cap with a hood up as well, so unless he was wearing the same clothes, he would be hard to find. To be honest, I don't think the police really took it that seriously overall, since Baltimore is a pretty dangerous place and way worse crimes happen there constantly. They gave me the whole be more careful from now on speech and left. My mom and brother checked in with them pretty regularly for quite a while, but they never found the guy. Needless to say, my mom definitely didn't let me walk home by myself anymore. I began taking the bus, which would drop me off right at our house, and my brother worked it out with his coaches that he could be home when I got home. We ended up moving to Washington State a few years later when I was 12, and I only go back to Baltimore once every year or so to visit my grandparents, though I never went back to our old neighborhood again. I hate to think what would have happened to me had those two guys not ran into the alley after me. Thank you to those two guys. And to the crazy smelly guy that tried to kidnap me, please, let's not ever meet again. All right. <clears throat> that is a true story from Reddit. Yeah, I, I I like that one. That's why that's why I chose it to do tonight. I thought it had I thought it had to be very scary for her whenever she was a kid to go through that for sure. I'm not ready to bust out my uh, Chucky laugh yet, Aaron. Sorry, too embarrassed right now. I'll, I'm gonna work on it a little more, and then I'll do it whenever I do the novelization. The best I can do right now is my uh, Chucky impression, and that's the, uh, you can't keep a good guy down. All right, guys, time for the first Child's Play 2 PDF ebook of the novelization giveaway. You're only going to, whoever answers the trivia question first wins the book. We're going to do four of these throughout the stream. 
So when you're ready, type ready in the chat. Okay, this is an easy one, but it goes to whoever answers it first. Okay, I'm gonna st I'm gonna block out what's behind me. I need y'all to name everything that's on the wall behind me. You've been seeing it this whole stream. Go. That's not all. There's more than just Freddy Krueger and, and Tiffany and Chucky. Oh, that's close input. You're missing one thing. And John got it. We got Chucky and Tiffany, Freddy, Michael Myers, Jason. Stay Puff don't count. He's not horror related. That's my fun kid is my niece, Erin. She's just a kid, so. Uh, okay, John, you've already won one, so you can't answer this next trivia question. But you did win a ebook version of Child's Play 2, the movie novelization. So, um, hold on a second. Okay, so here we go. The second trivia question, whoever answers it first wins. Irish opinion of four, you've already won, so you can't answer this one. Easy question about Child's Play, the original one. What is Chucky's full name? I'm going to have a cigarette, sorry. I do not condone smoking, but I do it. And Kurt said, got it. Kirstad, sorry. Okay, fun kid. If you're not Aaron, who are you? Yeah, Francis, I'm actually going to do all four. Of the, uh, for the first four Halloween movies had books. So I'm going to do those. Fun kid, if you're not Aaron, my niece, you said you're my nephew. Which nephew are you? And, uh, yeah, Kurt said won that book. So you're going to get a copy, an ebook copy of uh, Child's Play 3. And John got Child's Play 2. It's okay, guys. I'm going to give away two more ebooks, starting with one right now. I'm just going to sit here and uh, think up a good uh, Chucky based trivia question for you. Okay, this one's a little harder. You might have to Google this one. At the beginning, beginning of the original Child's Play, no, no, if you've already won, you can't enter again because it's for the same ebook. It's for child, for it's for an ebook of Child's Play two again. Um. Okay, well, Aaron, that would make you my niece, not my nephew, honey. It's okay, though. Okay, Anthony, I was reading what the person who wrote the story wrote. I did not write the story I narrated. I was reading a post from Reddit. That's all I was doing. So I read what they wrote. They are deaf, and they said mute instead of deaf. So I guess it doesn't insult them if they called themselves mute. I don't know. Aaron, I'm too embarrassed to do my Chucky laugh. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> maybe before the maybe before the stream's over, if people want to hear me try to do my Chucky laugh, I'll try it. Um, yes, Kurt said I'm actually going to try to narrate Freddy versus uh, 
Freddy versus Ash. It's a fan fan uh, fan fiction novel. Okay, here's the next question, and this one's a tough one. You might have to Google it. The winner will get an ebook copy of Child's Play 2. At the beginning of Child's Play 1 in 1988, who was the person that drove off and left and who who drove off and left Charles Lee Ray to get shot and chased into the toy store? Who was behind the wheel? Charles Lee Ray calls his name out whenever he drives off. Oh, DS Bean got it. I thought y'all would have a harder time with that. I really did. Uh, Kurt said you already won a book, so um, you're not you're you can only win one. All right, DS Bean, you have got an ebook version of Child's Play Two. Anybody that wins, send me an email. I'm gonna put the email in the chat, and you send me an email and let me know what you won, and I'll send it to you. All right, here's the last question for now. I might give away more ebooks in a little bit. We'll see. Let's see here. Hmm. Name every member of Chucky's family at the end of C to Chucky. Go. To win a copy of Child's Play 3, the movie novelization and ebook form. As long as you have it won part three, you can answer the question. No, no. If you've already won one, you can't. But uh, that, Aaron, sweetie, that's from earlier when I was asking that. That's, I think you've got some lag or something. Okay, for the rest of the chat, to win an ebook version of. Uh, Child's Play 3, the question is, what are the, who are the mem, okay. I have to ask another question. That was my last question and you answered <laughs> and you already won one. Um, Who is the little boy that Chucky tries to possess in Child's Play 3? The one where he's like, come on, let's play hide the soul. Give me the power, I beg of you. Playing hardball. What? <laughs> Trying to trick me there, John. The little boy in part three that Chucky tries to possess. Do you like how I got the glove tacked up on the arm of the sweater? That took like eight tacks, but I got it to stay. And Lady is our winner, our final winner. Be sure to everybody that won, email me at that email I dropped above and let me know which book you won. This last one, you won uh, Child's Play 3 novelization. Yeah, it's weird. Seed of Chucky had a totally different uh, distributor and stuff than Bride of Chucky. Like the whole reason that... Uh, part one was able to get remade is because Don Mancini pretty much had to cut a deal with Orion to make that. And they got like half the rights after that part two and three were made by some, a different uh, studio. Four was made by a different studio studio. Five was made by a different studio. And then the last two were made by a new one. But uh, even the first ever 
Chucky DVD set that ever came out didn't even come with part one because Orion wouldn't let their DVD go out with the others. And uh, so, yeah, Orion was able to make a remake because of the deal they made with Mancini and the other guy back when part one got made. What do you guys think of Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark that's coming out? Uh, yeah, um, he's gonna, Mancini's still going to make a TV series based on the uh, OG Chucky. But the original, the only reason they were even able to make it is because they had rights from whenever they uh, helped produce the first movie. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. Have a great night. It's okay, lady. It's okay. Did anybody... I even told y'all some of those you might have to Google. I, th I can't believe everybody got Eddie so fast. It's like really... <laughs> it's really quick in the first movie. Of course, he goes back to kill him later, but that's neither here nor there. Um, did anybody notice on one of the recent Scary Stories Telling the Dark trailers that uh, the Meantai Doty Walker set was there? Like the dog was staring at the chimney and the or the fireplace and the sheriff standing behind him. And you hear like a moo and then it cuts away. They're going to have the Meantai Doty Walker story from the book in there. That was always my favorite. Scared the hell out of me as a kid. It's funny. My son, I would read these my because my daughter loves scary stuff and my niece apparently does too. My daughter, whenever she was four, she asked Santa Claus for all the Chucky movies on DVD. Asked him in the a mall Santa for that. Anyways, uh, so I used to read these, the scary stories telling the books. Excuse me, scary stories telling the dark. I would read those books to my kids because they liked hearing them. But my son was deathly afraid of the big toe story. And they kept a journal in kindergarten and it said, what is his favorite thing and least favorite thing in, in his entire life? And he put down, my favorite thing is playing Wii U at my daddy's house. And my least favorite thing is the big toe. <laughs> oh, John, man, I was hoping you could stick around longer. I'm going to do a drawing really soon. And the winner of that drawing is going to get to voice a part and an upcoming upload on the channel. Uh, yeah, you'll still be included. I'll put you in the drawing. Tell you what, guys, I, I'm only going to be doing this uh, stream probably another half hour at the most. So we'll go ahead and do the main drawing right now. So I need uh, everybody that wants to be in the drawing, I want you to... Uh, say yes in the chat. Remember, if you win, you're going to get to voice a character in an upcoming upload on the channel from, from the book Jason X Death Moon that I, that I started on last night. I need everybody that wants to be in this drawing to, to win a chance to voice a character to put yes in the chat right now. And I'm going to go in order of yeses and that'll be your number. First person's one, second person's two, three, four, five, six... Seven. Anybody else want a chance to voice a character? Joker Harley, you still there? Yes, you can breathe into a microphone for me, John, if, if you don't win. All right, let's see here. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Does anybody, we got 10 people watching and only seven people signed up for the drawing. Is there anybody else that wants to be in the drawing to voice a character in an upcoming upload? All you have to do is type the word yes into the chat in the next 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Anthony, are you wanting to be in the drawing or not? That was the whole point of the joke. 
Anthony. <laughs> I told him I told him if he doesn't win he can uh Oh, you don't have to you don't have to be a great voice actor. It's it's just gonna be one upload. You know, it's gonna be like max two chapters. I'll send you the lines you need to record. It's okay. All right, so we got eight. Anthony, last chance. Do you want to be in the drawing or no? No, it's a different Anthony. It's not my son. <laughs> All right. I'm going to... I've got the numbers written down on little plastic pieces. I'm going to shake them up and draw a number out. And the winning number is five. So, Lady Paracosm, you have won the voice role in the next, in one of the upcoming uploads. But this is going to be a regular thing. This isn't just tonight. I, when I first started the channel and I was doing a live stream every month or so, I wanted to keep doing that. But things got in the way. And if you guys want me to do a, you know, do more regular live streams like this to talk to you guys like maybe once or twice a month, let me know in the chat right now. And if you want me to, I'll do it. And we'll do some more of these drawings so you, you know, I can do more where you guys can have a part in an upload or something, be more involved with the audio audio books in the channel. So if that's something you guys are interested in. All right. Thank you, DS. Thank you for stopping by. I'll try to make the next stream more entertaining. I just wanted to, to get it going and uh, touch base with everybody since it's, it was like December the last time I did one. Have a good night. Good night, John. Thank you. But yeah, if you guys are interested, I'll do more streams and uh, more drawings to have a part in the uh, audiobooks. Thank you, Danny. Thank you. When you get that new channel going, let me know. Yeah, return your books because our late fees are killer. The Crypt Keeper told you that. I'm going to write, I'm going to put some more of my short stories up in time. I put the scary man one up because I had the most confidence in it, but I'm scared of you guys not liking my other short stories. My niece has been wanting me to do my Chucky laugh all night that I've been working on for when I, when I narrate Chucky. So if I try to do this Chucky laugh and it's horrible, will you all be nice and not make fun of me? Okay, it might take me a couple times to get it right, and it's loud, okay? So, <clears throat> I got to do the voice first to get into it. Anthony, I'm going to do more of those drawings to have a voice in the book, in the book. so I'm going to do them probably twice a month. And it's not for the whole book, they just get to voice a character for one upload. So that could be like one or two chapters, depending on, because I usually do like a 45 to an hour long upload a night. Um, I don't have a hat like this one for sale on the merchandise store, but I do have a merchandise store now. And uh, <clears throat> come on, Anthony, that's not, that's not nice. I mean, I am a horror channel, but you know, a year or two years down the line, I'm going to run out of slasher novels and I might try some other stuff. As long as it's not being 
published. I think the Star Wars books are still being published. Um, so anyways, the Chucky laugh that my niece wants me to do so bad. <clears throat> I'm only doing this for her. <laughs> oh, it's bad. So I got to do the voice first. You can't keep a good guy down. <laughs> Something like that. There you go. There you go, Aaron. I've done it better, Aaron, I know, but I'm nervous. Everybody's watching me. If I'm just recording my voice, it's one thing, but everybody's seeing me. It's like doing my, my Freddy thing with everybody watching. Pleasant dreams. I look weird when I do it. Probably Survivor more. And I like playing killer, I really do, but they got the queue times all fucked up right now. It takes like 10 minutes to even get a killer lobby to get survivors in. <clears throat> and then they check my trophies and see I'm like 90% complete and they leave, they lobby dodge me and then I end up with a three person broken lobby. So I just mostly play survivor because of that. Please guys, if you want an ebook, please do not forget to send me an email. Let me know that you won and which child's play book that you won. <clears throat> oh, I love Michael Myers. Yes. Yeah, and Ghostface. Yeah, go ahead and email me now and let me know what you won. For you, lady, I'll send over the, uh, the lines you're going to have to read. It'll be on an upcoming upload where a female character has a good amount of lines. I don't want to jip you. Sorry. Burping over here. So attractive, I know. What is you guys' uh, favorite... What is your favorite book so far on the channel out of the 20 that I've completed? And whoever asked me about the hat earlier, I was going to give you a link to the new merchandise store. This one's not on there, but I can probably get you one made like that and put it for sale on there. But we have some really cool looking ones. Uh, not hats, but we have some really cool shirts, coffee mugs, and stuff like that. I'm working on getting the hats where I can sell those as well. But uh, here, I'll give you a link to the merchandise store. And guys, anything you, uh, anything you buy in the store right now, is 21% uh, off in celebration of me doing the, starting the 21st book that I started last night for the channel. Also, I put a lot of money into the channel. These books are really expensive, and I bought almost every single one of them. And it set me back a lot, and I want to keep buying the books so I can keep doing them for you guys. So I set up the store as a way for you guys to be able to support the channel, but also you get something back for your money that way. So, uh, well, thank you, Kirit Sad. I know you're new to the channel. You know, I appreciate you uh, dropping by the stream, subbing, and checking out the content. Um, JV211 and Joker Harley 2 are some great channels, and you guys should definitely check them out. Um, yeah, I'm going to get that link for you guys real quick. Yeah, the reality show, uh, the Jason Strain, that was really good. Uh, yes, Francis, I had it on my channel, but they took it down. I've got the whole episode of Evil Encounters that I was on, on Daily, uh, Daily Motion. I'll get a link in just a moment. Here is a link to the merchandise store for the channel. i got some really cool designs on there. 
just anything, pretty much anything you can think of, you can buy with uh, one of the, I got four designs that you'll, uh, that you would like. And uh, I'd really appreciate the support guys. And you get to walk around and slash your style and it advertises the channel when you uh, wear the merch and it helps the channel out when you buy it. And right now you can get 21% off every purchase by using the promo code kill flame, all one word, capital letters, K I L L F L A M E. Put that promo code in at checkout and you'll get 21% off. Here's the link to the store. They're coming back Sunday, Aaron. And, uh, I'll get a link to my Evil Encounters episode for you. One second. Are you at the store, in, uh, Danny? I, I think I think I picked some pretty good designs. Uh, scroll down. There's like four different designs you can choose from. I've even got one of them, uh, the stop motion animated version of me with the Freddy, Jason, and Michael standing behind me. Oh yeah, I read lots of horror in my free time. Uh, Dean Koontz and Stephen King are my favorite, and. Uh, Joe Thomas is really good. Stephen King's son. That Daily Motion link, guys, is the uh, episode of Evil Encounters that I appeared on where I told my true scary story and they made a reenactment of it. One second, I got to look at something for just a moment here. Okay, let's see what I missed here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's the stand. Pretty much anything. I'll tell you this, though. I don't read Stephen King. I do his audiobooks. I listen to his audiobooks. And I love the Dark Tower series. Oh, my God. I loved it. I wish they could have done the movie right and done, done like the whole series of movies instead of that horrible Matthew McConaughey Dark Tower we got a couple years ago. That did not do the books justice at all. They tried to cram like seven books into one movie. Um, it like Stephen King's books. I do the audiobook version <clears throat> because I love his stories, but he gets very monotonous in his writing. He will go on like three or four pages describing how a flower on the wall painting painted on the wall reminded the person of their childhood in Detroit's and that one little patch of garden they had in their backyard and the flower that grew like you'll just go on and on you know about stuff that it's like come on dude get, you don't have to talk about that that long but yeah I like listening to his audiobooks awesome thank you so much Nanny What is it you want, Aaron? Okay, I'll check that one out. <clears throat> Did you see the, uh, the cozy librarian collection and the, uh, I got the 80s Librarian Presents and the uh, You Want It Darker too. Those are the four uh, 
designs I got on the store right now. One second, guys. Adam Marcus was writing me a message. I just whistled. Sorry. Uh, Adam Marcus, the director of Jason Goes to Hell and Secret Santa, was writing me on uh, Facebook there. I was trying to write him back. Yeah, you see, I actually grew up as a kid when Goosebumps was being published because I'm old as hell. And uh, I read every Goosebumps that came out, every single one. I had a stack, like, from the floor to the ceiling <clears throat> of all of them. And I, I still, <clears throat> guilty pleasure, I still watch the uh, TV show on streaming, the old Goosebumps episodes. Got my kids into it. I love the Haunted Mask. And, of course, I've always been a Chucky fan, so uh, Night of the Dummy, Slappy was one of my favorites. But if I'm going to, if it's not the Haunted Mask or Slappy, then probably the one where they're at the camp and you find out at the end they're aliens getting ready to go to Earth. That was one of my uh, favorites that wasn't real scary. Is that is that the one I'm? What's the name of the? Is that the one I'm talking about? The werewolf of Beaver Swamp? Because I thought the one I was talking about was like a summer camp or something, and uh, there's like a monster out there. But it turns out the whole thing is just a drill to get these kids prepared to go to Earth or something. I cannot remember the name of that book for the life of me. Say cheese or die was a good one. Okay, Aaron, thank you. Um, you know, I've thought about doing the Patreon thing, but I feel like I, it's just like, I don't know. I just don't know how I feel about Patreon. That's why I'm trying out the merch store right now. But it does cost a lot of money to do what I'm doing with these audio books. I wish I could remember it here at Sad. I'm going to have to... I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to look it up. I gotta know. Let's see here. No, nope, that's not it. Welcome to Camp Nightmare. I believe that's it. Does that sound right? Welcome to Camp Nightmare. Oh, I was looking at the other screen. You got it. Yep. All right, Anthony. Thank you. Holler at you later. Appreciate you. Have a good night. So, Kurt said, what's your favorite Goosebumps? What was your favorite? Did you like all the sequels or is the first one your favorite out of all of them. <clears throat> I remember it got kind of, it was already silly, 
But I remember like Nine Eleven Gummy Three got pretty silly, and then Slappy's Revenge or whatever. But those they were pretty dark. The Nine Eleven Gummy ones were pretty dark. Thank you, Danny. Have a great night. I hope that you enjoy the shirt and everything. I really do. And thank you so much for buying something and supporting the channel. It means a lot. Uh, the haunted mask one. I remember that really creeped me out when I was a kid because I was a little bit claustrophobic. And reading it, you feel claustrophobic. Okay, Aaron. Okay. No, what? What are you saying, Danny? No, what? Yes. I enjoyed Slappy when I took the kids to see the Goosebumps movies. I really liked him in the movies. And I liked how Arl, uh, Jack Black played R.L. Stein, and then R.L. Stein played Mr. Black. Wasn't that how it was? That was pretty funny. Okay, yeah, no problem. I salute you, Danny, for supporting the channel, and I really appreciate it. I put a lot of money into these books uh, to save everybody else from having to spend that money on the books. So uh, thank you so much for helping out. And thank everybody for listening. I really appreciate you guys coming in and uh, hanging out with me tonight at the stream and, uh, you know, clicking that thumbs up on all the audio books and listening. And I'm glad I'm able to get these books out to the masses because it's just crazy that these books are so hard to find and that people are okay taking advantage of horror fans and making them pay like a hundred or 200 bucks for a book. Somebody told me earlier, one of the Halloween books I've done, is like $2,000 on Amazon. That's ridiculous. Yeah, the show got it good. There was one episode of the show, though, that was like so messed up. Uh, it's where the old people use those prunes to turn the little kids old because they want to sleep with them. And the kid... Like, like they're making them look older, but they're still the size of kids. Still sound like kids. Oh, it was, it was, that was a bad episode. I can't believe it got aired. Yeah, I know, Nola. You got the books and posted on the groups whenever I was looking for the books. I was like, ah, damn it. But it's all good. I got the, I found the ebook versions. <laughs> I had to pay like $15 for them, but it, it, they're hard to get. And they were never published in, e, in PDF. Somebody actually made it like that and sold it. That's how I'm able to give it to people. All right, guys, this has been a really fun stream. I've had a good time. I think I'm going to give away one more ebook before I go. So uh, get ready for a trivia question. And uh, yeah. Okay, this one's an easy, easy trivia question. If you've been with the channel very long, well, that's not fair to like Kirk Sad, who, who just now got here. Um,. Okay, this one this one will be good. What is the name of the last book I completed? Not the one I started yesterday, but the last book that I completed on this channel. The winner will get an ebook. The first correct answer. You want it darker? We kill the flame. Hey, 
And Nola's our winner. Jason's curse was the last one. Jason X was right before that. I did, uh, I did put out, wow, that's too dark, my bad, I did put out, uh, Jason X to the third power and Jason's curse the other day, like, as one upload a piece, but the order I completed them in on the channel was, uh, to the third power, and then Jason's curse. So, Nola, send me an email at uh, laruse.exe at gmail.com. And anybody else that's won, email me there and let me know what you won, and I'll send you the ebook. But uh, I've had a lot of fun tonight, guys, and I thank you all for coming out. And I'm going to be doing this live stream thing a lot more often now. I'm going to try to do it at least once a week or once every two weeks. And I'm going to do a lot more uh, contests where one of you guys can win and do a voice in future uploads. I think that'll be a lot of fun to have you guys come in. And, uh, you know, I'll send you the lines that you need to record. You send me the audio file. I'll edit it in, and you'll be one of the characters in future uploads. I think that'll be a lot of fun and uh, be a really good way to get you guys to interact with the channel. I'm also going to be doing more of the commentaries for movies like I did for Jason X. I'm going to do more movie commentaries. Um, if you check, please go subscribe to JV211. Um, please, please go subscribe to JV211 uh, because I'm going to be on his show a lot doing uh, a, a podcast with him called Camp Talk. Uh, just search for JV211. And uh, he does a lot of talking about Friday the 13th, the video game, and other horror movies and video games and stuff like that. And uh, she's asleep, Aaron. Um, yeah, and check out Joker Harley, too. Uh, he's also on there with JV211 on these podcasts. Check out the Late Late Horror Show. Those guys are really awesome. Uh, the Horror Hack. H-O-R-R-O-R-H-A-C-K. He's a new up-and-coming channel. I told him I'd give him a shout-out and spread the word and help him grow his channel. But the Late Late Horror Show and JV211 are some great channels, and I think you guys would really enjoy them. Thank you all for coming out. And until next time, this has been your friendly neighborhood 80 slasher librarian saying, thanks for listening, and pleasant dreams! <laughs>